In today's episode, we take a look at a cash van raid in which the planning appeared perfect. The first half of the video is the reconstruction and the two appeals. But look to see if you can spot what police failed to notice at first. The second half will be the police investigation afterwards. We start tonight with one of the most elaborate of crimes. It must have involved months of research and setting up, but it was over in about three minutes. The crooks are clearly dangerous, but they've profited to the tune of half a million pounds. We can show you exactly how it was done, because steps have now been taken to stop it happening again. Now watch closely. If you can help solve this one, you could make yourself a fortune. There's a reward of almost £50,000. The story begins in Chelmsford in Essex. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our combined plant and commercial auction here on October the 1st. The story begins on the first day of last month in Essex at one of the busiest car and lorry auctions in the south of England. It was here that someone made what should have been a discreet transaction, but it didn't go unnoticed. 7-9 bid at 7. 7.25 against 7.50. 7.75 at 7.75 for the first. Second, third at 7.75. Can you sign with a young lady, please? The man who bought that yellow lorry stood out at the auction. He had black, greased back hair, he spoke with a West Midlands accent, and he wore a tie. Somehow he seemed too smartly dressed for the occasion. He was probably with two other men. The lorry they'd bought had nearly 200 miles to cover before it reached its final destination. It's 8.30 a.m. the next day, Tuesday, October the 2nd, and two men joined this blue Bedford van filling up at a petrol station at Market Drayton in Shropshire. One of the men was particularly distinctive, heavily built, 5 foot 10 inches tall, with long, dark hair and a striking Mexican-style moustache. One witness also remembers the driver of the blue van. He was stockily built in his late 30s and he had light brown hair which looked as though it was receding at the sides. He also wore a gold ring on his right hand. Thanks a lot, love. The blue van had been stolen from Leeds in June. Just after 10 a.m. that same day, on an industrial estate in Telford, a van driver noticed a stranger in the lorry park. He was picking up this distinctive purple and white tipper truck. It had been parked there for a week. This lorry had been bought 12 days earlier at another auction in Meesham in Leicestershire. It had an appointment to keep in just over two hours' time, and it set off into the heart of Shropshire along the A442 Whitchurch Road. It's later that same day, Tuesday, October the 2nd. It was lunchtime when this Group 4 armoured security van left the Shropshire town of Wem, travelling east to make another delivery. The journey took it over Western Crossroads on the A49. That's the main trunk road from Shrewsbury to Warrington. And that was where it passed a distinctive purple and white lorry. What's he up to? He ain't gonna stop. Get him back, get him back. There's another one behind us. Don't shoot! 
those few terrifying minutes, they disappeared with £454,000 in virtually untraceable banknotes. Now, just to recap, the yellow lorry came from Chelmsford and was driven 200 miles to the ambush point near the A49. That's not far from the Shropshire market town of Wem. The next day, Tuesday, October the 2nd, the gang closed in. At Market Drayton, the blue getaway van was seen filling up. And at Telford, the distinctive purple lorry was driven away. At 12.15 that day, the Group 4 van set off from Wem, crossed the A49, and this is where it finished up. Detective Superintendent Barry Main, let me make the point first of all. We obviously consulted you and Group 4 in some detail before showing that. This sort of crime would now be hard to replicate. Certain steps have been taken to avoid a recurrence, yes. Right, now, the lorries are obviously the best clues you have to go on. What, what information do you need? Well, the yellow lorry, we believe, was driven up from the auction in Charlesford into Shropshire on the 1st of October. It had a me uh, mechanical fault. Uh, it was losing oil and water, so it was necessary to stop fairly frequently. So it was somebody... dropping oil and would have called in at station? Yes, somebody station must probably. have seen that vehicle. OK, fine. And the blue getaway van, that had been stolen in Leeds? That was stolen in Leeds on the 26th of June and it must have been stored between that time and the 2nd of October. So where was it? Right. Now, what about the men? We've got some not bad descriptions. We've got the man who was at Chelmsford in the, uh, in the auction. Now, we've got a fairly good description. That's the video fit you've got of him there. Yes. Now, he's described as in his 30s. He's 5 foot 6. He's clean shaven. And as you see, his hair is, is greased and combed back. Now, we've done a video fit here. He was described as having a sallow complexion. What was meant by that? Witnesses describe uh, him as looking ill. As ill, right? Yes. Now that slicked back hair. Obviously, if you were going to disguise yourself, maybe one of the first things you do is cream back your hair. Well, I'd, I'd have difficulty doing that, but uh, yes, it's possibly a disguise. <laughs> okay. Now the other guy, he was um, with this extraordinary moustache. Again, that presumably could have been a false moustache. That's possible. Yes. Uh, again, with the video fit, we can we can take that off. This guy's stockily built, and that's the best description we've got of him. That's what he'd look like without the moustache. Yes. The reward. It's enormous. Yes, it is. Up to £45,000 for any information concerning the robbery. Tax-free, I presume? I presume so, yes. Now, if people are frightened about ringing in, can they ring anonymously? Can they ring in confidence? Yes, we'd like to hear from anyone who has information. Uh, of course, if they want the reward, then we will require some detail. Obviously, it, you're going to have to have an address and a name for them if they want to get something of a reward. The number yes. to call if you can help here it is, 01811 8055. If you prefer, you can call the incident room at Wem Police Station. That's Wem 3... First, the battering ram raiders. This is the gang who used two lorries and a van to ambush a security van on a country road in Shropshire last month. There's another one behind us. That was part of our reconstruction. The raiders made off with almost half a million pounds in unmarked banknotes. Superintendent uh, Barry Payne is the man hunting the attackers. What have we got? I know an enormous number of calls, something like 70 or 100 calls here and over 30 in the incident room. Yes, we've had a tremendous response. Uh, one particularly interesting one in respect of the yellow lorry, uh, that was sighted on the A41 between Newport and Cosford uh, at a garage. It was leaking oil, there were two people with it, and we're following that up now. That sounds very likely. Now, what about the people? Uh, a large number of calls in respect of the people, particularly the man with the moustache. Uh, many of them giving us uh, names, and some of them, in fact, uh, tying in with each other. What uh, the corroborating that two two guys with were, the same were together. Name, in fact, in yes. fact the, we've got a very good description of the fair-haired man with receding hair because I think one of the witnesses rather fancied him. Yes, that's right. And we have a suggestion now as to where those two men were. So good information you've got. Yes. Exciting. Um, it's promising at this stage. Good. All right, Superintendent. Thank you very much. Then there was the armed robbery in Shropshire. After seeing our reconstruction, more than 250 viewers called in to offer help. We showed how a security van was ambushed in a country lane and half a million pounds were stolen. One of the raiders' vehicles, a yellow lorry, had driven 200 miles from Chelmsford in Essex to the ambush spot at Wem. It had been bought the day before at auction, and two men who were at that auction rang to tell us that they saw the lorry leave, accompanied by a blue Ford Escort car. 
a blue car but with a green passenger door. Very distinctive. The police are following that up and if you know such a car, please do let us know. It was robbery that must have taken months of planning and police had nothing. What turned out to be a cash van raid would turn out to be a total nightmare and no leads for the CID and robbery squad. The usual suspects were rounded up because it always is the usual suspects. And police from different constabularies, including the flying squad, kept an eye if any criminals with any form would vanish or start making big purchases. With nothing, a month later, a crime watch appeal was released. After hundreds of calls and some promising leads, nothing materialised that the police could run with. Over a week after the raid, the Brighton bombing shot the world. A provisional Irish Republican Army assassination attempt against members of the British government took place on the 12th October 1984 at the Grand Hotel in Brighton, East Sussex. A long delay time bomb was planted in the hotel by Patrick McGee. Before Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and her cabinet arrived there for the Conservative Party conference. Although Thatcher narrowly escaped the blast, five people were killed, including the Conservative MP and Deputy Chief Whip Sir Anthony Berry. And a further 34 people were seriously injured with life changing injuries. This and the Brinks Matt Gold raid a year before had police resources stretched. With no leads being visible, police contacted Crime Watch with a reconstruction being made. Over 500 calls were taken, the pool being the £45,000 reward offered by Group 4, tax-free, for information leading to the arrest and recovery of the money. Now, the reason Group 4 offered such a large reward was because they needed to know how the gang gained knowledge of the cash pickups, or if there was any untrustworthy individuals who worked for Group 4. Now, the average yearly salary in today's money is between £26,000 and £27,000. Back in 1984, it was £8,000. So the pull of a £45,000 reward, £185,000 in today's money, it would be sure to pull a disgruntled relative, girlfriend, or fed-up neighbour, friend, or someone with a ear to the criminal underworld. None of the leads provided any information. Even police grasses who make a living off the rewards offered from banks and security firms turned up nothing. So police started making different inquiries. It soon became apparent to police that these were not from the criminal fraternity. These were professionals. The operation was so well planned and so sleek. And with the money found out to be totally untraceable, the police came to a conclusion. Now after the criminal underworld turned up nothing, it was thought to be Irish paramilitaries but intelligence at the time shown even they were interrogating their own. London criminal gangs were also going through their suspects. The £484,000 that was stolen would be the equivalent to £1.8 million and change in today's money. Easily a life-changing amount. The police, after several phone tips, came to a conclusion from the calmness of the raiders and how they had the van security guards on the floor. They was military, either retired or still serving. After inquiries led to nothing, the case became cold, but the gang's weak link would soon be apparent. A name would crop up more than once. A tip-off of the stolen Bedford van, stored in the locker. The lead suspect identified by police in early 1985 was a car mechanic who operated from Spark Hill, Birmingham. His garage was literally a garage. It was a one-man band operation his earlier career was in the military as a royal engineer, but left due to deteriorating health. He was honourably discharged. The man had an ex-wife and daughter. Information from the newspaper archives. The Birmingham Daily Post reported Gareth Hughes and no fixed address was arrested and charged July 1985 for theft of a motor vehicle and storing the stolen Bedford van in the Shropshire Raid. He was bailed due to further investigations. In deteriorating ill health, 12 weeks later, Gareth Hughes was hospitalised and died of a rare form of liver cancer, fibromella carcinoma. He was 37 years old. There was no conviction and he is innocent until proven guilty. 
the police's only suspect was gone. The other leads were friends or colleagues he may have known. These drew a blank. No one really knew him, apart from being a friendly bloke. He always had work at his garage, to the point he was thinking of taking extra help because he was finding the work physically difficult. No one realised how ill he was. He was always a good laugh, but he never socialised, commented his neighbour, who works in a paint shop in the same road next to the garage. When asked if he thought Mr Hughes was involved in the robbery, he said, I don't know, but nothing surprises me anymore. With the shock of the few people who knew him, how much info did the police have? Were they working off the tip-off alone? Gareth Hughes fits the man in the auction, ill-looking with a West Midlands accent. So what do we take from this? Now what if a man who's deteriorating ill health knows that his life is over, comes up with a plan to steal money for his estranged family. Would the thought be your legacy, your daughter, like a Walter White from Breaking Bad? Would a cut of the money that would be the equivalent of £450,000 now, would that be enough for a fresh start for you and your family? And would the other five members, ex squaddies also, be on that life-changing money? 1984 was a time of mass unemployment, the highest recorded on record, and life had little hope and was very grim. Many ex-servicemen found their way into prison, the highest percentage being over 35s. Leaving the services is unlike simply changing jobs. It is a wholesale life change in which the service leaver discards more than just employment. He also relinquishes his accommodation and the camaraderie of the service's life. He undergoes a radical change in lifestyle. He enters civilian life, having to discard the familiar trappings of the services, including the relationship between different ranks and discipline. The term used by the services to describe the process is transition. In some ways, the criminal underworld offers a replacement for those things. It is not known if the gang were hired or it was their own job. So what's to conclude from this? I came across this case researching Briggs Matt, and then while researching this one, I came across a story in 1984 of a police detective who was caught who was an armed robber. It's absolutely insane, and I'll feature it on this channel soon. Researching these things, you definitely enter a rabbit hole. Now, if the cash van raid was ex-army, then it's planning, Almost an extraction of the money points to superior planning by professional soldiers. Nothing was reported since about the robbery and no further arrests were made. The battering ram raiders case to this day remains unsolved. With the cash van and bank robberies being so common, this one slipped away like many others in the wild west of 1980s Britain.